Hey there, welcome to My Green Pets. I'm William Green. You can probably tell the reason I wasn't able to make a video last week was because I had no voice. It's still in rough shape, but it's getting better. Got a few different things in bloom today. Let's have a look. And start out with Calyrex Wida. Wida has five flowers and is really looking nice. Very pretty indeed. Nice job, Wida. Now, Calyrex is cool because it blooms before it starts to root. So you can see the new growth here has got no roots coming off of it yet. All the roots you see are from last year's growth. So this is a prime time to divide this plant if I want to, which I do. Um... So I'm not sure how I will do it, or even if I will do it, but I'm thinking I can pull this thing out of its pot and chop it into three pieces, sell two of them, and then keep one piece for myself. Assuming when I cut through the rhizome, there's none of that ugly purple stuff. So that might be coming in the next few weeks. Down here we've got... RLC Jesse Lee. Let me turn around for you to see. Kind of a lackluster flower. This is the third year or the third bloom in a row that this plant has produced that the flowers haven't been quite as big. Um, form, form is looking okay actually so maybe it, it is on the mend but this plant does not look a hundred percent well to me this last bulb's kind of yellow these this is the back bulb from a much healthier looking plant i sold off the front parts kept the back and the new growths are nice and green and i guess you could say they are steadily getting larger but this plant's not nearly as big and robust as vi and vigorous as it was before i divided it so i don't know but the roots in the bottom of the pot still look good they're not all rotted or anything like that. They're still kind of whitish. So maybe it just needs time. Maybe I just set it really back, set it back really far. Next to it, kind of hiding here, you can see my um, Dienia ophrytis. And it's grown up from the bottom of the tent here. And there's a few other, there's a couple other growths on it that have come up and bloomed as well. So that's kind of fun. And then, oh, I wanted to show you, one of my friends is a ceramicist, and he made this skull planter for me a few weeks ago. Check this out. Is this amazing? Look at this. It's got a place to put your plant. I haven't decided if I'm going to plant something in it or just put a pot in it, but isn't it cool? I got it in the tent because I kind of want to season it a little bit. Super, super nice. I love that thing. Very cool. What else we got? Lots of growth as usual. So we've got Calia labiata. Big purple new leaf and then another one behind it. Calia triony. Cashins with two nice new big leaves. Still not quite big enough to bloom. Calia mossiae has put out a nice new growth everything's rooting and I'm just got my fingers crossed that everything's healthy and there's no lurking conditions that are gonna jump up and bite me I still am concerned about Calia, Mas, uh, Calia Maxima this is not a normal leaf color it should not be yellow like this some of the lower leaves are yellowing that wouldn't bother me so much but when a nice big fairly recent leaf starts to turn yellow like this something something's up so it does have two new growths pushing and they should all be blooming in late summer so let's see we've got five sheaths now maybe we'll have two more so seven sheaths should be a beautiful show unless something rears its ugly head on this plant and then I'm going to divide it up after it blooms 
Uh, back here we've got one of my uh, Chloe Rebecca Northern's um, water got stuck in the new growth and festered and and rotted out the middle of it. So that's unfortunate and something that I really should have been keeping an eye out for. But since I've got it here in the back, I can't keep as good an eye out. But the good thing is the plant realizes that this bulb probably isn't going to make it all the way. So it's actually putting out two new ones. I don't know if you can see at the bottom there, there's little nubbins. But it's putting out two new growths, which is awesome. So I'm going to be very, very careful to watch those, make sure they develop normally. I still expect this one to have a bulb, but I don't think it's going to be very big and it might not bloom. But it has put out tons of root, which helps the plant. Uh, down here we have my two new Cloaceas. On the left here we have uh, Rebecca Northern Mikabi, recently awarded with an AOM, or AM. And then next to it, this thing, oh my gosh. This is a recent hybrid, it's unnamed. And it's got three growths on it on this one single ball. This thing is ridiculous. It might be in too small of a pot, but I think I'm going to leave it there this year. But, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? That's going to be crazy. It's a summer blooming Cloesia crossed with a winter blooming Cloesia, so it's going to be very interesting. All of my Cloesias have a Grace Dunn. Grace Dunn is one parent. Random fact there. Uh, what else? My Calyrex seedlings from my uh, Mayu by Orku Cross are doing well. We see some first pseudobulbs starting to push. And it's going to be time to separate these pretty soon. And I might be selling off about half of these in the next couple of months, probably in July. What else have we got here? Oh man, okay, so this is Inti, my prized Catlia Rex. As you can see, I took off half, more than half of the plant uh, because it was just turning yellow and shriveling, and you know what that means. So I, I sliced through just behind the third bulb here, and I did see the purple ring. So I give it a, th a thigh mill soak for about 15 minutes, soak the whole plant in thigh mill. I've mounted it. The new growth should be rooting soon, so I'm hoping that it's going to put out a flush of new roots that's going to grab this mount and be okay. I have not had success treating Fusarium such that it did not eventually continue on to kill the plant. I lost key a couple weeks ago after a very le very long, slow Fusarium infection. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if the same thing happens with NT, which is sad, but the good news is I selfed NT last year. Those are currently in uh, flask at Troy Myers. We're waiting, waiting on germination, but the seed was like 66% viable. So NT will live on through its, through its seeds. Hopefully. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, kind of exciting and very unexpected was finding this the other day. I don't know if you can see it right there. Bulbophyllum lovely Elizabeth seems to be producing a spike. It's never spiked at this time of year. It always spikes in like November. So that is really exciting. I'm super excited to see that. Um, I'm gonna have to be probably I'm gonna probably have to stake it because it's gonna come over here straight at the at the plastic and probably bloom right into the plastic. So I might have to stake it. Anyway, very excited to be able to see that. Haven't seen that bloom in about a year and a half. Did a major major division on that a couple of years ago. Might have been two years ago. Yeah. Uh, Bubblefilum echinolabium rooting really nicely and another new growth this is the fourth one in a row super excited to see that and the latest bulb oh this is what Hal is supposed to look like this is how this is what Hal is supposed to look like the bulbs are supposed to be like big sea green eggs 
this is what Hal is supposed to look like. So I'm so happy that his roots are growing back. His bulbs have bloomed. Uh, his bulbs have swollen up. And Hal is back where he needs to be. Very happy to see that. Good job, Hal. Welcome back. Uh, Vinda Falcata, still in bloom. These are the last two spikes on it. Lovely, been in bloom since April. Just looking great. I am still looking at signs of yellow in the leaves. I feel like the leaves are too yellow. I'm hoping it's just because it's getting too much light, but it is a little bit fishy that it's the lower leaves that are yellower than the top leaves. That, that, don't know. It's kind of weird. Um, and Grey Cum Leonis also putting out some roots here. New leaf, very excited about this guy. And not expecting any flowers on it. Maybe next year we might get one or two. But I think it needs more leaves. I think it needs like at least eight adult sized leaves before it'll bloom. But we'll see. Who knows? Uh, you'll see in the middle here we've got just a bunch of. Carnivorous plants, they have somehow infiltrated my collection. I have no idea how. Um, some very interesting crosses here. This is a Nepenthes Bongso cross. And I'm very happy to see each new leaf coming out a little bit bigger than the last. We'll see all these new little pictures develop. Those are cute. Um, these two are Nepenthes stenophylla, stenophylla. This one put out, oops, this one put out a nice new picture a couple weeks ago. And I have already put an osmocote pellet in it, uh, a snail in it, and I also put a pill bug that I found in it. So hopefully I'm not loading the picture up too much. Just get excited, you know. Um, this one's showing what the Nepenthes people call leaf jump. So that's when the plant's kind of making a gradual increase in leaf size and then suddenly they put out a leaf that's like, whoa, way big, way bigger. And my Catlias do this too. You can see this, this is definitely a leaf jump in terms of size. Okay, we've got some Pinguicula here that are growing. These look a little pale. I'm hoping that they're gonna green up. And then we come to this. Um, this is the most expensive plant I've ever bought. This is Nepenthes Raja by Edward Siana. It's the two, two of the largest species uh, of Nepenthes, two of the largest pitchers crossed together. And, um, yeah, I don't know what came over me, but here it is. It turns out that here where I live in Colorado, I live near some big, big names in the Nepenthes world. Um, Jeff Schaefer, who goes by Nepenthes God on Instagram, has been growing Nepenthes for decades. Um, he's breeding them actively. He lives a half hour from me. Jeremiah Harris, who anyone who's into car uh, carnivorous plants probably knows Jeremiah's name. He's got a very successful, I mean, he's got a world-class collection. I did I actually did a, vi a video visit with him a few years ago. Uh, he lives an hour and a half away from me. Kujawa orchids, Mikhail Kujawa, who has a very, very nice Nepenthes breeding operation and greenhouse, lives an hour away. So all these big Nepenthes growers are very near me, and it's probably, I guess it's not surprising that uh, I now have some Nepenthes in my collection from these growers. So that's exciting. This is from Jeff, uh, Jeff Schaefer. And I guess I'm going to leave you. That's about it for today. Exciting things happening in the grow tent. Um, and it is officially summertime. As you guys probably know, I'm a middle school teacher and the last day of school was yesterday. So I am thrilled to be on summer break. We've got a couple trips planned this summer. Yellowstone National Park, Glacier National Park. I'm hoping to drop by Salt Lake City and see Orchid Dynasty for the first time and meet the owner there. So I'm hope hopefully it's going to be a good summer. 
All right, guys, thanks for stopping by. See you next time right here on My Green Pets. I'm William Green. Happy growing.